Okay, so what we're talking about is Vienna in this in this uh, episode, uh, in part two here. Again, where we just left off, uh, this combination of alleles at the V locus will lend you either a Vienna marked or a Vienna carrier. You can get either of these two out of this combination. It is the only locus point where the recessive is actually expressed as a Vienna marked or can lie recessive and not visible in the rabbit and remain as a Vienna carrier. So this is kind of where it gets con where it gets really challenging and where it can cost a lot of breeders money and and hence the caveat uh, that we discussed at the beginning of part one is that a Vienna carrier will look like a normal rabbit. Uh, my Siamese sable who's out playing here, you know, I know she's not a Vienna carrier. She doesn't have any blue eyed white in her history. However, I could look at the same rabbit without a pedigree and still see. Uh, and breed this breed her to uh, another rabbit uh, in my color program and all of a sudden I'll get a Vienna marked rabbit and you're like okay where did that come from it's because that Vienna this combination of alleles happened to line up and it just happened to become visible and be marked as a, as a Vienna marked so that's why it's so damaging because it can lie dormant uh, and hidden in your rabbit for seven, eight, ten generations. And in that meantime, you've bred this rabbit to countless others in your herd. And then you start magically after a couple of years, start uh, getting weird combinations and these weird Vienna expressions. Uh, and basically your entire, because a Vienna carrier in particular, shows no visible signs of being a carrier, you aren't going to be able to tell who in your, your color project is actually a carrier now. Uh, and it just costs too much and takes too much time to try and clean that all up because you would have to breed test all those rabbits. And you got to remember, Vienna can carry and lie recessive for seven, eight, nine generations, you're, you're basically ruining another person's color program or your own color program by introducing Vienna to it, if that makes any sense. Because remember, Vienna will mask over most of this stuff and, and you just don't want it there uh, in your color programs. The only time that we insert a colored rabbit into a Vienna program is to improve the type, to improve the physical traits that we're wanting to achieve of a particular breed, uh, and lastly, also to help uh, with some of the uh, recessive traits that come alongside blue-eyed whites. Uh, we haven't had too many problems with most of our blue-eyed whites. About every third generation, we try to throw in a, a Vienna marked or a Vienna carrier into the mix to help improve the, the immune response. Uh, we have noticed that, that Vienna rabbits tend to have a little bit more of a challenge um, uh, with, the, uh, with a compromised immunity issue. Uh, if you breed blue-eyed white to blue-eyed white a lot, Yes, uh, if you can keep that, that moving and you can have really clean lines, you don't have any problems, but y we do see some blue-eyed whites have problems, and some breeders do have problems. Uh, however, not something we've had a whole lot of problems with, but again, we have strict uh, rules on how we, we run our blue-eyed white program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab you three rabbits today, and we're going to look at blue-eyed white, we're going to look at what a Vienna marked rabbit looks like, and we're going to look at what a Vienna carrier rabbit looks like. And that way you can visually see what we're talking about in regards to the VM and the VC. Okay, so let me grab a blue-eyed white first and we'll take a look at that. So I've got a blue-eyed white here. And uh, she's not very old. Um, we're coming up on about uh, three and a half months now, almost four months. She's a Holland Lop. 
We work in blue-eyed white in Holland Lops and uh, in our Netherland Dwarf. Now, uh, when I, we're talking about blue eyes in particular, we're talking about a really deep blue eye color. Uh, almost ice, it's basically ice blue almost. Very, We want a very rich blue eye color. Um, we want all white rabbit. There's no other color on her. She's completely wrapped up in white masking tape. We don't care what happens in the rest of the genetic string because it's obsolete. We don't know what it is. We don't care because Vienna is, is, is so dominant against the rest of the genotype. So she is an example of a rabbit that contains two of these lowercase v's which are our recessive Vienna. She carries two copies and when she carries two copies you get this blue-eyed white rabbit. Um, when we talk about red-eyed whites in this final and in the next episode, uh, red-eyed whites are not built off of Vienna at all, okay? Um, uh, this, this is all strictly Vienna. Blue eyes, whatever. Now there are situations in certain colors where you're going to get like kind of a bluish gray color. You're going to see some of that in Dutch. <clears throat> you may see some of it in some of your other your other colors. <clears throat> but in general, you're going to see uh, a, a deep blue eye. Uh, blue gray is 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 not the same as 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 the ice blue that we're seeing in in the uh, Viennas. But again, you want, a, it's hard for me to get a really good eye picture of her with the light here and, and where we are. But it's a very blue, deep, dark blue, ice blue coloring. So this is an example of, of a blue-eyed white and, and what that should look like when you produce your eye. She's got a little nick in her ear because uh, her one of her siblings got a little nibbly. But she's, she is completely a brood stock for us. Uh, she's one of the best uh, Hollands represented uh, that we've been able to create thus far. And, and again, it's hard to work in the type on, on blue-eyed whites and certain breeds. Uh, for whatever reason, it's, it's built on a lot of recessives. And, and so trying to get the, the head and the ears to, to, to be what we want, not too long, we don't want the ears too long in a Holland. We also don't want, you know, we want it to, to try to get that head to look nice and the overall size and the width of chest and everything. Uh, we've made some really good strides in the last year to improve that. And this girl is, is actually uh, the next step in, in the process. And we've, we've really, really got some good things going for us on our blue-eyed whites in Holland, and in particular our Netherland Dwarfs. I, I haven't seen too many. Uh, there, there's some really gorgeous ones out there, but we, we're, we're catching up on the Netherlands as well. But we haven't been doing them near as long. Let me grab you a Vienna Mart, and that way we can take a picture of that. Uh, actually, I'm going to grab one of the Netherlands for that. Now, you've probably seen this girl before when we were talking about Dutch. I know, go fast. Go fast. I know, I see it. All excited. Um, we always have live entertainment during our lessons. I, I'm telling you, it's always exciting. Um, so this is Vienna Marked. This is a Netherland Dwarf. She's a great example of Vienna Marking. Now, Vienna Marking, like we had talked about in Dutch, sometimes gets confused. Um, with Dutch in Vienna because you have this white band around the around the neck we have a white stripe here oh that's a Dutch well that's not a Dutch Dutch is more of a breed uh, it is also a color but but Vienna is actually responsible for this now Vienna can represent as a VM in a lot of different ways okay this is just happens to be very common in Vienna marked but a lot of times what you'll notice is in a, in a VM 
it, let's say the parents, let's say a parent was a blue-eyed white and we were trying to improve type of our litter to continue to build the program and we bred that to a really nice looking chestnut or whatever we had that was really nice and uh, to improve the type of the rabbit, the physical attributes of the rabbit. And so what we're doing is is putting in new traits to improve the rabbit. And we got a rabbit like this. Now, sometimes it may just be one white foot. It could also just be a white spot behind the head. It could be just as simple as just uh, very blue eyes. Now, this girl does not have blue eyes. Um, and that's okay. All right. She's still going to be a VM, a Vienna marked. Uh, if she was an all black rabbit with the ice, the, the, the very deep blue eyes and the very, uh, ice, ice colored blue eyes, uh, we would also refer to her as a VM, especially if the parents are Viennas. Uh, whether it's VM, uh, two Vienna marked parents or two, uh, two Vienna carriers or a blue-eyed white involved in the mix. If she has the blue that we're talking about uh, and she has a parent, then we, we would have to call that rabbit a VM. Even though it has no white markings whatsoever on the body, that eye color tells us that we are Vienna marked. So this is, this is the classic thing that you're going to see in a Vienna marked. But again, you can have other oddities. I have one right now that has just a tiniest little white spot behind the head. And, and the only way that we, we know that that rabbit is a VM rabbit is because of the parents being one of them being a blue-eyed white and the other one being a Vienna marked. So let me grab you a, a Vienna carrier and we'll talk about that. All right, lastly, we have Vienna carrier. As you can tell, on this rabbit there is no white whatsoever we have no white we have no blue eyes we have nothing on this rabbit to indicate that Vienna is at play and this is the danger you run into let's say that another breeder is trying to move some stock and they say oh well we got this rabbit here this is a black rabbit we're gonna sell this black rabbit and um, so you go and you buy the rabbit, you get home, you get a pedigree, and you look at it, and the parents are a blue-eyed white and a, another black rabbit, let's say. And you're like, well, okay, whatever, but it's a black rabbit, right? So you breed this black rabbit that you've got into your herd, and it ends up being a problem because this is actually a Vienna carrier. And if you were to get this rabbit out of a... Uh, in your litter out of you know something that was worked uh, that has Vienna in it basically the rule of thumb is if, if any of either of the two parents have Vienna we consider the entire litter as receiving at least a copy of that Vienna whether it presents or not it means even even a rabbit could potentially let's say if we had two Vienna marks that that are potentially uh, a rabbit could get the uh, the non-Vienna allele, the the one available from each parent. It may not be Vienna, but we don't know that. We don't. We can't tell by looking at that rabbit whether or not it is actually uh, Vienna marked or or actually Vienna carrier. We can't tell. So we have to use look at the pedigrees. We have to be very careful of that. Um, so. Take note of that when, 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 if you're going to be working in Vienna, always check them pedigrees to make sure that you're, you're, that the parents look good, that the pedigree is as clean as you can tell, that it's, there's no Vienna, there's no VMs, there's no VCs, there's no blue eyed whites. Um, it's very important if you're going to be working in a color program that you, you can ascertain by pedigree with very small likelihood that there's any Vienna in that rabbit before bringing it into your your herd and then I always tell people to to just you know do a test breeding with it one time don't go crazy with it and breed five or six of your rabbits with that particular uh, buck if that's the case or uh, that way you can kind of gauge in your first litter if you get a VM in that first litter you can avoid 
spreading that through your entire color program and having a you know 12 or 13 rabbits that are all v vienna marks or potential vienna carriers that aren't going to help you in getting to where you're you're going so there are rules like I say those rules have to be followed when working in vienna so we're gonna go here and we'll do i'm going to do a quick um part three here to discuss uh, the Vienna lineups and how they work together.